Hey there everyone, it's Eclectic Matt, and I'm back with a new tips and tricks video for Delta T, the beta augmented reality game that we've been testing for a couple of weeks now. Now this is not a walkthrough video for every action that you can do, but instead it's going to show off a selection of the gameplay and a few tips for progressing in the early stages of the game. So I'm also not here to sell the game to you, so I'd rather be up front. Leveling is slow and the early stages can feel like a bit of a grind at times. The servers are also really temperamental, so actually being able to do anything can be a real chore at times. For new players, it's also quite unclear what actually earns you experience, and this video will explain that as well. Now for the most part, I'll be talking about actions that most players will be able to achieve in levels 1 to 4. While you will get more experience for taking down level 5 cores, it's not something that most players will have the time or the opportunity to achieve early in the game. So, let's move on to what you can do. Now there's a lot to cover, so I've split it into two parts that will both be covered, but just so we're not bombarded with it all at once. So the first part will be generating items and scrapping, then the skill center, looking at energy modules, planting and upgrading, and finally attacking and capturing. Okay, then we'll move on to part two, which are more actions, but are some more information. So that is mining and crafting. Where do items come from? Where do you get experience? Where do you get time credits and time marks? And what's next? So that's what we'll cover in this video. So moving swiftly ahead to item one, generating items and scrapping. Now this is my important tip number one for new players get into the habit of generating weapons whenever you load up the game or every few minutes. Just whenever you remember, generate some items. Even if you have weapons, generate some more. EMPs are the cheapest to produce in terms of the energy cost, but you can always get that back by scrapping the items. Just keep popping into that little menu, generate weapons whenever you can and fill up your inventory. Once you've generated a couple of hundred, go into your inventory and scrap them. Now this will earn you the energy back and a very small number of time credits. This is the benefit. It's not a large amount, but by simply generating your own weapons and scrapping them, you can make time credits wherever and whenever you like. Yay! Now while you're in that generator menu, Click the weapon icons to see the requirements to upgrade to a higher level version of that weapon. So that's either mining items, damaging enemy cores, or making base connections. You can earn more and boost your weapon generation by spending some of your skill points earned through leveling up. So that brings me neatly on to important point number two, and topic number two, Spend your skill points in the skill center. I'd recommend putting a couple into the recycling skill as this increases the time credits you gain through scrapping those generated weapons. You can also increase the number of items you can generate at one time and also the speed that you can fire weapons. So I'll leave it up to you to find the balance that works for you. My only advice would be to check how many skill points each skill costs, because they do vary. And to remember that you can reset your skill points once for free and then for a cost in time marks down in the bottom right hand corner. Next up is important tip number three, which will make things far easier. And it's remembering to use an energy module. Now these are found in your inventory and they act as an additional tank of energy storage that you can stick on and take off again. Always apply the highest level energy module you can so that your tank is as full as possible and this means that you can harvest more energy and generate more weapons before needing to harvest again from cores. Okay, on to number four, planting and upgrading. So use your core seeds to litter the areas that you visit frequently. 
if you can reach that core again once planted, you can heal it with energy, install mods, upgrade the core, and connect the core to a base. If you are able to, try to plan ahead and leave a bit of space for a base in your favorite areas. The base takes up the entire player radius and a little bit more, so try to leave a gap nearby where you could plant a base once you reach a higher level, but we'll come to that in a future video. Once you've planted the core, upgrade it by spending some energy and time credits. This is why it's useful to have a way to generate more time credits. Several key actions in the game require you to spend anything from a hundred to a few thousand time credits, but as long as you continually earn them through recycling or attacking opposition cores, then you should have enough to spend. Weird little feature with the cores, some appear in areas where you are playing. They appear with your name in the created buy box, but you didn't plant them knowingly, and you don't own them. They just get added by the game to help you out, possibly only at lower levels, but that's not confirmed. Don't be surprised to see them, just help yourself to a free capture and some experience. Now we get on to the next point, attacking and capturing. So you will need opposition cores littered around to make this work, but as you approach the core, check for mods such as shields and mirrors and be sure to attack those first. Shields will freeze your weapons for a fixed period of time, the effects stack up, so firing an area of effect weapon, the EMP, at several shielded cores at once could leave you unable to attack for several minutes, especially if they are higher level cores. So, what you need to do is go into the core menu, click attack mod, and fire a few ballistics, or use a morph on them. Morphs are strange weapons, they have a chance to change the type of mod. Uh, from a shield to a mirror or a lower level shield, they can also be used on cores overall, so that it can change the owning megacorp of core, so turning it a different colour. However, most of the time they just do bugger all. They just flash for a minute or so and then stop. So I rarely use them. Once you've knocked the mods off, feel free to use EMPs and ballistics to take the core down and then capture it. Next up we have mining and crafting. Now mining items is a pain in the ass, but basically involves walking into the overlap between the shapes drawn on screen. Now it's a pain in the ass because it doesn't take into account road layouts or private land, so you might end up walking hundreds of meters to get around the roads to the closest item, only to find it's within a residential block and you can't access it. The location also seems overly specific. It's not the entire overlapping area, but a precise point within that area, so I've had to spend quite a lot of time walking around the area in between the shapes to actually retrieve the item. Now, once you mine an item, you can use it immediately. However, if you mine a blueprint, you will have to craft it. This costs elemental resources, which you only earn as bonuses, or you can buy them in the store. Now it's important to note that crafting from blueprints are one use only, and they do not appear to give any experience, but they are often higher level items. So let's discuss where you actually get experience from. Basically, it's creating, capturing, mining, and destroying. The biggest experience in the early stages of the game comes from planting and capturing cores. Planting gives 50 experience, and then capturing it gives 80, for a total of 130. Upgrading core levels and mining items gives you a little experience as well. Downgrading a core's level by attacking it and neutralizing cores give even less experience, but the game sort of expects you to capture it afterwards. Importantly, adding mods to cores, so shields and mirrors, 
and actions like making base connections, which I'll cover in a future video, do not give experience, nor does generating weapons, crafting items, destroying mods from opposition cores, and however necessary these actions might be, they don't give you any experience. However, there is bonus experience offered for leveling up items, so those requirements like mining a certain number and damaging enemy cores, these have bonus experience attached, so it gives you an additional incentive to mine, damage enemy cores, and create connections to bases. Next up is where items come from. Now, you get most items from mining, crafting, and your login and level up bonuses. But you can also get some by downgrading cores as a bonus, neutralizing cores, and also when you generate weapons or trade them with other players. Finally, most items can be bought from the store using time marks. We'll come on to that in a second. So where can you get time credits and time marks? So time credits, I would say the recycling method is the best one, but login, level up and destruction bonuses also offer time credits. You can also buy them from the store, but I would strongly recommend not doing so. Here's my final little tip. So, the equivalent number of time marks spent on the crafting materials and then recycling those materials will get you far more time credits than if you bought them directly. That's my tip for the credits. The time marks are available as login and level up bonuses, but these are much harder to acquire. These are mainly used for store purchases and key actions like resetting your skills, but they can also be spent on instant item generation. A good use for time marks is purchasing those crafting materials and recycling all or some for time credits. And you might want to consider the item packs for seeds. So that's been my not very short run through of some tips, tricks and how to get from levels 1 to 4. And we'll now talk about what's coming next. So the next video starts with core connections, bases and clans and we'll start to look at some of the mechanics for base battles. So check back soon for that video. If there is anything I've missed or if you have any tips then please let me know in the comments section below. If you liked this video please consider giving it a little like and if you want to see more then remember to subscribe. I've been Eclectic Matt, thank you very much for watching everyone. I'll see you soon. Bye!